Hello and welcome to Swipe. Coming up, making music that stands out. Why the industry is turning to novel new ideas to get people's attention. Catching Comets, the robotic spacecraft that's coming to life after a three year snooze. Fancy a bit of jelly? We take a look at where social media might be heading. And French worms that can cook. It's all about games for the wee ones in this week's review. The days of sitting passively watching a music video could soon be a thing of the past. A growing number of artists are adopting a more interactive approach to showcasing their songs. There's everything from futuristic filmmaking techniques to novel new app ideas, as Sky's Katie Spencer has been finding out. Uh, uh, uh. When Bombay Bicycle Club announced details of their fourth album, the indie band also unveiled this innovative new music video. Swiping between nine slightly different takes of the same scene, the technology allows you to manipulate the band like stop-motion puppets. It's the first music video to use this technology and a unique way of getting fans to listen for longer. Like being there, you had no idea how it was going to turn out, really. It was very hard to picture it because everything was done so sort of in stages. The technology perfectly matched what we were doing with, with other areas of the album, with the artwork, and it kind of relates to the music as well. They aren't the only established artists who are trying to find new ways of connecting to fans online. Take Pharrell Williams' video to Happy. 24hoursofhappy.com is the world's first 24-hour music video. Filmed over 11 days using 400 dancing extras across eight miles of Los Angeles. Depending on when you tune in, you'll see something different happening. Digital engagement is now an important part of putting out a record. The main reason we're doing a lot of these interactive experiences is to increase engagement and increase like um, a, a, a love for the band or the artist and for also to change perceptions of an artist, to see them as innovative or very digital focused and to really feel more um, on the same level as their audience. There are some impressive examples of how new technology is being used by the music industry. Take Death Grips video, similar to a computer game, with the click of a button you can switch between anyone in the video. Rapper Iggy Azalea has taken engaging with her fans even further. Online viewers are given the chance to buy featured items. In recent years, helping established artists find new ways to build their audiences digitally has become a priority. For Island Records, interactive ideas like the Bombay Bicycle Club's video are delivering results. The video went viral. We achieved half a million plays in a couple weeks. Um, really, really exciting. Uh, it was referenced in uh, many of the radio plays. The fans just you know, talked about it continuously, shared it a lot. Digital is not something that's in one office at the end of the corridor. Digital is a part of every day for every label, I'm sure. Social media plays an important role in today's music market. And with more of us heading online to listen, artists know that engaging digitally is vital. Katie Spencer, Sky News. You're watching Swipe coming up. Are you ready for some jelly? We take a look at some of the new social media ideas. But first... Well, I don't know about you, but I get frustrated enough trying to pick up a 3G signal where I live. Well, that's the excuse I give when my mum tries to FaceTime me. But imagine having to wait three years for a signal from the deepest reaches of space. Ten years ago, the European Space Agency built and launched a robotic spacecraft to catch comets. Well, it's about to come to life after being put into deep space hibernation, which at this time of year, I'll wager, a fair few of us wouldn't mind. Sky's Stuart Duggan has boldly gone to find out more. These are exciting times for the European Space Agency. A ten-year mission in the making, the plan to catch a comet is now coming to fruition. The Rosetta spacecraft was launched 10 years ago and now it's coming back online. Despite the high stakes, there's little worry at the ESA that Rosetta won't wake up. The hibernation is done to, uh, because the spacecraft, in case it gets into internal trouble, doesn't have enough power when far away from the sun. So we need to put it into some kind of mode which is safe and you can compare it like a TV in standby. Uh, it cannot react to external things anymore, so nothing can go wrong. And, and the only thing running internally is a few heaters and a clock. 
Scientists estimate the signal should reach Earth at some time on January the 20th. Once we have rendezvoused with it, we will escort it on its journey through its closest approach to the sun and then comes back out again. And then as a kind of icing on the cake, the cherry on the top, for the first time we'll deploy a lander on the comet itself. Finding a landing spot on the fast spinning comet will be the biggest challenge. That should happen in November, but the first images of the comet could be back before then, in May. Chemical analysis of the isotopes that we, we find near the comet give an indication of where the comet was formed, how the comet was formed, and ultimately how the solar system was formed. Comets are also important as they are believed to be a delivery mechanism for water in, in the inner solar system. So there are theories that indicate that comets are a delivery mechanism for water to the Earth itself. One billion euros has been spent getting this mission off the ground. Its findings will be invaluable as scientists believe comets hold key information about where we've come from. Stuart Duggan, Sky News. You're watching Swipe coming up. Why The Last Sim City is now being offered as an offline game. But first... We found out this week that for the first time ever, the number of text messages sent has fallen. But what's taken its place in the quest for instant socialising? Nick Stilianu has been sharing a few new ideas. Instant messaging is everywhere, and it's now the number one way we communicate with our friends. It lets us know what they're doing, what they're up to. Hold on. <laughs> but it's not just text we want to share, it's photos and video as well. Apps like WhatsApp and Snapchat have kick-started this multimedia chatting revolution. If you're in the office though, it's a bit difficult to make your messages really sparkle. Luckily, there's an app for that. It's called Wordio and it manages your text to over a million hours worth of library stock footage. So I can take a message like this and turn it into this without ever leaving the room. Sometimes you just want quick advice. And even though the internet's full of places to get answers, Twitter co-founder Biz Stone has squished in another. It's called Jelly, and it's a bit like a social search engine. It's perfect when you need answers to something really fast. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg even used it when he found a spider in the shower. Not the kind of bugs he normally deals with. But then he got caught out on the same app when he was seen texting and driving. So is everyone moving away from Facebook? The average UK Facebook user spends eight hours a month on Facebook. The average Twitter user, for example, spends half an hour on Twitter. Yes, uh, there may be a spread of, of use uh, into these new tools, but Facebook is still the gorilla in the room. It's no secret that the big social networks will be looking to see if any of these apps stick around. And the message from the tech giants, well, that'll probably be a picture of a giant check. Nick Stiliano, Sky News. You're watching Swipe coming up. Ooh la la, we have French worms and games for the little ones in this week's games review. But first, here's a roundup of anything you might have missed over the last few days. If you're Google, I guess £2 billion, well, it's just a bit of pocket change. And that's how much it's paid for the home gadgets for Nest. The company makes smart thermostats and smoke alarms that can be controlled from mobile phones. It's one of the biggest deals in Google's history, eclipsing how much it paid for YouTube. Facebook has also been busy. It's paid just over £9 million for a small startup called Branch. That's despite the company's founder being very vocal about the social network's failings. In a blog, 22-year-old Josh Miller said Facebook may have an irreversibly bad brand. Could Microsoft be planning to ditch its troubled Windows 8 operating system next year? Well, that's what tech blogger Paul Thurrett thinks. He says the software firm will announce the news at a conference in April. Microsoft released Windows 8.1 last October after users complained about the original Windows 8. The problem was the layout. It was designed to work well on touchscreen devices, but lots of people found the navigation difficult. Apple is going to pay out over £19 million to refund parents in America whose children ran up big bills from in-app purchases. The agreement comes after a settlement with the US Federal Trade Commission. Apple's billing practices were branded unfair by the consumer watchdog after youngsters managed to make their purchases without their parents' full permission. And some good news for SimCity fans. 
after quite a few teething problems with people struggling to log in to the most recent release of the city building game, the makers say a free download of an offline version of the game will now be released. The online gameplay had originally been an attempt to curb piracy. French worms that can teach you how to cook and monsters that help you spell. We are looking at games for our wee ones in this week's review. Comedian Ellie Gibson, who makes Scummy Mummies, the podcast for less than perfect parents, has been giving us her tips. The world's greatest chef wizard. Ooh la la. Omri Le Worm is actually an educational game. It's actually been used in primary schools to teach kids about cooking. Uh, it's the brainchild of Olivier Blanc, who's the son of the famous chef Raymond Blanc, and it features ten of his recipes. Uh, all the voices have been done by Simon Pegg, and it's just really nicely put together. There's songs and there's games and loads of facts about food and nutrition, but kind of most important, it's just really good fun, and it's a really nice app, actually, for parents and kids to share and enjoy together. It explains how to cook and the different techniques and ingredients you might use in really quite simplistic terms so that kids can understand it and they can even try out the different processes. Et presto, voilà. Endless Alphabet is a really fun puzzle game that teaches kids how to spell uh, often quite complicated words, you know, things like gargantuan and corporate, and it does then explain what the words mean with a very cute little animation. So it's really good fun. Uh, it's free to download, and it's suitable for quite a wide age range because um, even if kids aren't at the reading and writing stage just yet, they can still learn about the shapes of letters and the kind of sounds they make. I. My son's only two and a half, and he, he loves it. Well, obviously he's a genius. Rory. That will be... That's going to just be Rory, I suppose. So the Say What You See games are sort of cryptic picture puzzle games where you have to look at details and follow the clues and think laterally to find the solutions. Now this is a Doctor Who themed one and it actually covers the whole 50 years of the series. So it's all in here, Cybermen, Daleks, Weeping Angels, you know, whether you're a young or an old Whovian, uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. And normally you have to buy it but it's actually free for a limited time only at the moment so it's worth snapping up right now. The Toka games are hugely popular. They've actually hit 50 million downloads now. And there's all different kinds you can get. You can get the hair salon one, there's a cooking one. Uh, this is one of the newer ones. It's called Toka Cars. And it's really brilliant because there's scope for creativity here. You can actually design your own little racetrack and choose where the ramps go and the jumps go. And it's brilliant for kind of encouraging older kids who like video games, but maybe getting them to think a bit, you know, more with their imagination. For younger kids, it's also quite good because there are ready-made worlds. That one is $1.99, but as I say, there are lots of different Toka games and some of them are free, so they're well worth checking out. Set fire to your hair, poke a stick at a grizzly bear. Dumb Ways to Die is a free game. It was actually released by the Melbourne Transport Authority to teach kids about rail safety. Uh, so it's very funny, it's very silly, and it's quite dark in a sort of, you know, fun Tom and Jerry sort of roadrunner kind of a way. Die. Obviously kids love it, um, but it's actually very addictive as well, so it's great for grown-ups. The supermodel Kate Moss actually recently said this is her favourite game. There are actually some quite serious lessons in here about safety and, you know, being careful and waiting to cross the tracks and all that kind of thing. But of course it's, it's dressed up in a really clever way so that kids hopefully will actually learn stuff while they're having fun without even realising. Well, that's your lot for this week. Remember, you can catch up with the breaking tech stories all week on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone apps and skynews.com. We'll see you next time.